Hi, I'm Brad Templeton from Robocars.com and I'm going to take you through the top 13 stories of 2020 in self-driving cars. Now, the f year began on a bit of a down note, what some people would have called a robocar winter. This was a time when big car OEMs like Mercedes were slowing down their self-driving efforts, moving more towards ADAS and autopilot competitors. We saw a couple of different self-driving companies, uh, Drive.ai and Starsky Robotics, both shut down or be sold for acquihire. It seemed as though times were going to be poor, and that was before even the virus came around. At number 12, though, was the release by GM's cruise division of a car called the Origin. The Origin is a custom-designed self-driving taxi. It has uh, seats that face each other, sliding doors, a design we'll see in a few other places. And Cruz says this is not just a concept car, the sort of thing you often see shown off at auto shows, but something that's really in development, a vehicle designed purposefully for self-driving, purposefully for shared taxi service. At number 11, we saw the National Transportation Safety Board, the NTSB, come down on some problems in the industry. Uh, they came after Tesla, and they came after Uber. Uber, because of the fatality two years ago, which when finally uh, released in their investigation, had most of the blame put on the safety driver who negligently was watching a video instead of watching the road while driving her car. However, they put a lot of blame on Uber's internal culture, but were also very friendly to the way that Uber had turned it around and followed their recommendations and worked with them. Now, the safety driver didn't face so good a fate. She's currently facing charges for negligent homicide for her role in that accident. At the same time, they also slammed Tesla for some of the accidents, fatal accidents, which have occurred with Tesla autopilot on. Now, of course, again, the driver is responsible for those accidents, but the chairman of the NTSB was a little bit annoyed that we didn't name him by name, that Elon Musk had literally hung up the phone on him when he was trying to work with them. At number 10 were some milestone announcements from several of the leading self-driving companies. Here's Auto X, which showed off that they are now doing self-driving taxi rides in the limited area of Shenzhen in China, where they are based, uh, with no safety driver in the vehicle, with uh, an empty vehicle coming to pick you up and take you around. Uh, this is the first such effort in China. It follows the result from Waymo a couple of years ago, and we'll be hearing more about that later. Uh, Cruise wanted to show off that they could do that, and so they released uh, just a couple of weeks ago a demo of one of their vehicles driving in San Francisco. Cruise puts a focus on saying that they drive in the harder streets of San Francisco rather than the easier streets of Shenzhen or of uh, Chandler, Arizona. But you'll notice in this Cruise demo that they're driving late at night on a very empty road in the Sunset District of San Francisco, not the hardest part of town, and there is someone in the passenger seat able to hit the emergency button or able to grab the wheel. So not quite at the level that others have done, but nonetheless a worthwhile milestone from crews and the other companies. Going out without someone behind the wheel is basically a demonstration that you're confident enough to take that risk, that you've convinced your lawyers and your board of director that it's time to do that. Now at number nine was a surprise deal between Amazon and Zooks, for Amazon to acquire Zooks. Zooks is a startup which received oh, almost a billion dollars in funding, not just to build a self-driving system, but to do everything, build a self-driving system, design a brand new car from scratch, and also make a robotaxi service. That's a tall order. Zooks ran into some tr trouble and ran out of money in early 2020, and it was a bad time to try and raise money with the stock market in a tailspin and that winter going on. So they settled with a very wealthy sugar daddy, Amazon, who now has the money to let them realize that vision. Many people wondered, would Zooks just be torn apart and its tools used to help Amazon with its giant logistics business? Or would they actually pursue the robotaxi business? Right now, Amazon has said they want to continue that Zooks vision. At number eight, one of the few announcements from a car company acting on its own and not through a startup like Cruise, was the announcement that Honda's Legend will now feature, at least in Japan to start, a traffic jam pilot, which allows you to take your eyes off the road and do your email and read your books while the car is driving itself in a traffic jam. 
That's a step above the driver assist autopilots we've seen that require you to keep your eyes on the road. It requires Honda to take liability for what this car does. Now, it's much easier to drive in the slow speeds and simple situations of a traffic jam, but it's nice to see an automaker ready to make that step. Audi and some others said they were going to make that step, but pulled back a couple of years ago. At number seven are sensors. A bunch of big things happened in the sensors that people believe will drive these self-driving cars. This includes LiDAR companies. In the LiDAR space, two companies went public through the SPAC approach of merging with a company specifically built for going public. Luminar began not too long ago, founded by a very young engineer who is now one of the world's youngest billionaires with Luminar valued at close to $8 billion in the stock market. The oldest LiDAR company for self-driving, Velodyne, also went public to a $4.5 billion valuation. We also see Ouster, a spin-off company of another early LiDAR company, uh, going out possibly with a $2 billion valuation sometime next year. Uh, a couple of other interesting new sensors showed up in the marketplace as well. Uh, many people have been interested in producing imaging radar, and that's radar that can produce a more detailed image than the very, very coarse image that you get from most automotive radar, radars. Uh, RB, a, a imaging radar company, is rumored to be doing a deal with Tesla. Tesla has, of course, refused to work with LiDAR, claiming it's a crutch, a distraction, but maybe they'll be convinced that they can do the same thing with radar. On the upper left, we see an image from a new camera called the Clarity from Light, a company that used to make consumer cameras. They got an investment from SoftBank, and they have promised, although not shipped, a sensor which they claim with just three cameras spread out along a baseline can get you depth values out to 1,000 meters, which will be quite astonishing if they can pull that off. Now, the number six story is the number one story of the year in every other field, the, of course, arrival of COVID-19, the coronavirus. Um, that hit all of transportation pretty hard. Uber's rides went down 73%. Uh, they bounced back a little bit, and deliveries helped them there. Public transit ridership went down to very, very low levels. All the self-driving car companies had to stop doing testing with two safety drivers in the vehicle since that wasn't safe, although some of them resumed it later in the year. Uh, and on the other hand, most of the self-driving companies found that they were pretty well adapted to work from home and got through it. We've seen cities rethink what transportation will be like, and we've seen people wondering how long it will be before people will share a vehicle with other people, whether it's a transit van or an Uber pool or a, a shared self-driving taxi. The effects of COVID will be with us for a long time to come, even after the vaccines. At number five, Zooks returns to the countdown with the reveal of this custom-built vehicle that they've been designing since 2016. They've kept it very secret and under wraps, but they decided it was time to show it to the world in December of 2020. Here's the vehicle, a design you may find similar to some others with symmetrical design, uh, sliding doors, seats that face each other, but see a few other touches on it, like the LiDAR is mounted on special posts on all four corners of the vehicle, allowing it to see with very few blind spots. The wheels push to the edges and the ability to do four-wheel steering for high maneuverability. Uh, special suspension, a lot of other features that Zooks hopes will make the difference over the other players in the self-driving space. Now, Zooks did not reveal anything about their robotaxi plans, about how they'll operate a service, but we should look forward to seeing interesting things from Zooks thanks to the money from Amazon. Number four story was the surprise merger of Uber's self-driving group known as ATG and Aurora, a uh, hot startup in the self-driving space, which was founded by the people who were leaders at Tesla, Uber, and Waymo. Uh, those people together have a great pedigree and they attracted a number of people to the self-driving stack they were building and got a very good valuation Though at the same time, uh, they haven't shown us very much, and their early automotive partners actually dropped out and switched to other companies. Now, Uber ATG, on the other hand, faced a lot of problems. It did get some other investors, but as we said, it had that fatal accident, which shut it down for a very long time. And frankly, the reputation of the software inside Uber ATG was not very good. So people say that Uber ATG was sold to Aurora, 
But it's not clear it was a sale. Uh, Uber actually paid for the privilege investing $800 million in the new combined company, which gets a valuation of almost $10 billion. Um, that's an astonishing number for a company that's never shipped a product or had a user, and which has in fact switched to trucking rather than cars, as it seems in its main focus. Nonetheless, those big numbers suggest something big should be hoped for from Aurora in the year to come. Now, the number three event was not a self-driving car, but it was the release by Tesla of what they call, it's a lie, they call it their full self-driving beta. It's really an autopilot, needs human supervision as a driver assist, that now works not just on the highways, but on city streets. Here's a YouTube video. Many YouTube videos can be found, and I have a playlist available of people driving around using this vehicle. You can actually see in the visualization on the screen how the uh, Tesla creates a map as it drives. It uses only very simple maps, navigation maps, and some detailed maps of certain intersections and special cases. So it's quite remarkable that they can do that without fully detailed maps and without fancy sensors. They do this only with cameras, radar, and ultrasonic. Here we see it handling a parking lot. It's a parking lot that has a Tesla supercharger. So there's been a lot of excitement about this, a lot of people believing that, wow, Tesla somehow has made a full self-driving car. It has not. It is nice to be able to make a video of a car taking you on a trip, driving you for half an hour or an hour. But that's quite a big difference from a real self-driving car. That A real self-driving car has to do a great deal more. And that's what brings us to our number two story, which is Waymo. Now, Waymo released an incredible safety report showing the results of their pilot project in the suburbs of Phoenix, uh, giving real robo-taxi service to people, including uh, some number of miles with no safety driver behind the wheel, something they began two years ago. Uh, the report was astonishing. In over six million miles of driving, their system never made a mistake that would put it at fault in an accident. Now, there were some little accidents and contacts, mostly the fault of other drivers, never the fault of the Waymo system. That amounts to, well, over eight human lifetimes of driving without making such a mistake. So while you may be impressed with Tesla's going for an hour or going for a trip, that's quite a distance from something that can go for eight human lifetimes of driving. Waymo has done it. Waymo has made a real self-driving car. They've made it safe enough that it's better than human beings and so it's very close to being deployed. And that's why the number one story of the year is the same company. And that is the announcement that Waymo now has opened up their service near Phoenix, Arizona to the public. If you're in those towns, you can go there with your phone, you can download the Waymo app, you can summon a vehicle and take a ride in it. And in most cases, there'll be no one in the vehicle except you. This will be a rider only trip or an unmanned trip, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it's only in one of the simpler driving environments in the world. It's not so hard to drive on the suburbs of Phoenix. But nonetheless, they've had the guts to put that out and to do lots and lots of rides. And again, you can see many videos on YouTube because the riders no longer have NDAs. They can film them. They can talk about them. They are on the cusp of expanding outside this area. Yes, they have work to do to make it support more difficult areas. There's a lot of hints to suggest they'll be showing up in San Francisco, uh, which is a much more complex area pretty soon, or Silicon Valley, which is of medium complexity. But one way or another, they are really very far ahead of everybody. This is it, 2020, the year that the robocar, that the self-driving car became a real product, one that anybody can use, at least if they're in the town where it works. And it's only uphill from here. Waymo doesn't need a lot of breakthroughs to make this better, to make this work. Uh, Tesla does need breakthroughs. The other companies still have breakthroughs they have to achieve. But Waymo has actually done it, and that's the top story for 2020. You can find more all the time on robocars.com, my blog, ideas.forbrad.com, and my Forbes columns. I'm Brad Templeton. Look forward to giving you more news in the future.